when I received the invitation to speak at the Do Lectures, I was very fascinated. Um, not only because I will get to meet with a lot of interesting and cool people, but also the event was going to take place at such a beautiful place. And uh, the other co-founder, and uh, who is also my wife, uh, found out about this conference and uh, immediately invited herself. And <laughs> here she is. Um, but the next thing I thought about is, huh, Wales? i never been there, and I don't know much about it. So I decided to buy a book on Wales. So I went to Amazon.com and searched Wales guidebook. And I got 635 results, which is quite a lot. So in order to uh, narrow down my search, I sorted by the number of star ratings that other readers gave. And uh, I went through the top 10, went all the reviews of the other readers who have read and purchased these books. And finally, I decided on this book. And during my very long flight from Indonesia to London, I read through this book and then left my review on Amazon for the future travelers to know what I thought about this book. And this, is, sounds, this sounds so normal and common for us, but this really fundamentally shifted the power from the publisher to the people. Now people can choose a book based on peers' review rather than what publish, publisher want to push you. And this kind of transformation of empowering the users and the people is actually taking place in many other industries beyond the publishing. And restaurants, hotel when you travel, and even medical doctors. But if, if you think about it, this is only taking place in the developed world. And my organization, Copernic, is trying to bring this transformation to the developed world. So let me tell you a little bit about Copernic. We are a not-for-profit organization that brings simple yet life-changing technologies to the developing world. So technologies such as this, this is solar light, you charge during the day, and you have the light at night. This is useful because people are still relying on very expensive and dangerous kerosene light, and which transmits so much harmful smoke. We are also distributing fuel-efficient cookstoves, because many people in the developing world still cooking with firewood in a traditional way and inhaling a lot of harmful smoke. We are also distributing a very simple water filter like this because 4,000 people are dying every day due to lack of access to clean and safe drinking water. This is another kind of technology. Very simple rollable water container that can transport 50 liters of water in one trip. And this is reducing women's time and work in, trans, uh, in fetching water. So there are so many great simple technologies like this exist, but they are not reaching the people who need them. So our organization is focusing on the distribution of these technologies to the poorest communities. And this is how it works. We have a catalog of these technologies that I just introduced. We have now about 70 products on our website. And local organizations 
in the developing countries, they will browse through this list of technologies and choose the ones that can solve the particular problems that their communities are facing. And they submit a proposal for their technology needs. And we will put that on our website. And anybody who wants to support this project can donate. And once we reach the required amount of fund, we use that fund to purchase the technology and ship it to this local organization who requested it. And then local organizations then distribute to the communities. And often at the subsidized price. Because we work in a very remote area where the poor communities are. And if you add up all the distribution costs of ferry and small boat and trucks, the price becomes a prohibitively high. So we are reducing the price so that everybody will have access to these products. And we work in very remote location like this. This is um, a distribution day. We brought about um, 50 solar lights and clean cook stove this day in the poorest district called Okusi in Timor-Leste in Southeast Asia. And uh, we were literally crossing the river like this to bring these technologies to the village on the opposite side of the river. And this was the beginning of uh, the rainy season. And uh, we went there around noon. And uh, it took us about three to four hours visiting village by village. And by the time we finish and come back to the other side of the river, the river was flooding and level was so high. And uh, we were about six or so, and we were discussing what to do. Uh, should we stay on this side and then uh, uh, sleep, or we should uh, cross, cross, the, cross this river? And we decided to go. Um, but the current was so strong, so we hold each other's hand like this, put everything on our head, because the water level was this high, and went slowly crossing the river. And uh, it took us about an hour, but uh, we, we made it. And you see this light from behind. This is actually a truck lighting us the way uh, because we didn't see anything. And um, this really helped. And from the other side, too, the car was trying to light up the pass so that we can cross safely. And we made it. But later on, I heard that uh, uh, five soldiers uh, in the previous year uh, who tried tried to cross this, this river like this, and then all, all of them died. So we are very lucky. Um, this is another distribution day to a small island called Atauro in Timor-Leste. And we were bringing a water filter to the, to the villages. And they had no access to, to clean water. And uh, we get to see um, beautiful nature. So the good things also also happen in, uh, in these locations. So it's been about uh, two and a half years since we started Copernic. And we have reached about 75,000 people with simple life-changing technologies. That means people now have access to clean energy and safe drinking water. And now they're cooking with fuel-efficient cook stove. And we are very happy about this little achievement that we were able to have. But we started to ask ourselves, are we having any impact? Do people like these technologies? And if they don't, what's the problem? And if the only way to find out is to ask. And we got quite a lot of feedback. This is uh, the solar light and we brought to these communities in this island of Atauro. And they really liked it and gave the five star rating out of five. Although they preferred this model to this because it charges a mobile phone. As they are very happy. 
And this is a community in East Java in Indonesia and where we brought this simple uh, water filter. They liked it and gave us four stars out of five. But they said, you know, when you put the water on the top, it becomes too top heavy. So it makes it unstable. Can you do something about it? And they also said they want a different color. <laughs> of course. So they gave us four star out of five. Very interesting. And this is another kind of technology, um, a solar light, by the way. And we got one star rating out of five. This is the worst. And I think the beauty of this feedback is that we not only get the very positive feedback, but also these uh, constructive ones. <laughs> and so we brought this uh, solar light to uh, communities in Kenya and Nigeria. And these were the first two projects of ours. So we are very excited about it. And we brought 150 units each to each project. Initially, people were very happy. But after a few months, we started to hear complaints because these units stopped working. And as soon as we found out, we contacted the manufacturer and said, hey, uh, we have a warranty agreement. So they shipped immediately the replacement lights to the communities. But these replacement, replacement lamp, uh, lamps also broke after a few months. And we were so devastated because these were first two projects that we started. And we asked all our friends and, and relatives and family to, to finance this, this project. And it failed miserably. And, but the good news is that um, this company reimbursed us the whole money eventually because the, even the replacement lamps didn't work. And we were able to purchase uh, the more uh, better uh, quality light. And now it's working. And this is a fuel efficient cook stove that we brought to an island called Lombok in Indonesia. And the value proposition of this fuel efficient cook stove is obviously fuel efficiency. That means that you use less fuel to cook. That means people will spend less time collecting the firewood. And this time saved, they can reallocate to more productive activities. But the challenge was that because of the design of this cook stove, people have to chop the wood into smaller pieces. And this process eliminated all the time saving that they had from the fuel efficiency. So and another challenge was chopping of, of wood is considered to be a man's job. And users of the cook stove are mostly women. So women have to convince their husband to chop their wood. And if they succeed in convincing them, they were using it. But if they don't, they stopped using the, the cook stoves altogether. But the good news is that when we communicated this experience to the inventor of the cook stove, he quickly developed this another design of cook stove where you don't have to chop the wood. And uh, we are waiting to see what the communities are thinking about uh, this new prototype. So how would we know if we didn't ask these questions? And we did. when we did, we got quite a lot of information. And we are putting all the information on our website so that everybody can see and learn from our lessons. And what it means is that a woman like Ibudete here, who is a leader of a women's organization in beautiful island called East Flores in Indonesia. Now she can go through our website, 
this is a, the catalog page on our website. And she can browse through technologies. She chose the energy and the environment related uh, product. And browsing, browsing. And she was particularly looking for a uh, solar light. So she looked at this and uh, went to the detail page and found other organizations review and um, the rating of these technologies. And finally, she decided on this product and these units are on its way. So w what's the big deal? Um, we think this is quite a game changer because in the development aid industry, we rarely ask people what they think about the project. And so we don't know whether it's having an intended impact or whether people are happy about it. And I'm saying this because I have been part of this industry. I was um, with the United Nations for 10 years. And so I am also guilty of these shortcomings. And what we are trying to do, when we, when we founded Copernic, we wanted to do things better. So we developed this system where we ask end users, the people, on the feedback of the technology that we distribute and put that on the website publicly so that next local communities looking for the appropriate technologies know <coughs> what their peers are saying about the technology. And also the inventors of these technologies will have the opportunity to improve their own product. And donors also will know which product and project will have higher rate of success based on the feedback that local organizations provide. So I think we're doing OK in the last two and a half years, um, but we can do a lot more. And especially presenting what we do better and telling our stories much better. And I, I noticed that uh, in this do lecture community, there are great talent um, in, the, in the creative industry. And I would like to invite you <laughs> to um, take a six months to a year sabbatical <laughs> to volunteer with us and join the team which is located in Bali. <laughs> I promise the weather will be very nice and warm. Thank you.